Welcome back to the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Last week, we were very fortunate to talk with Chris Wallace, who collaborated with the two brothers on their book, specifically called Getting Started with Horse Poker. We're talking specifically about Michael Mizrahi and our guest this week, his brother, and also four-time bracelet winner. We're very fortunate to have him on Robert Mizrahi. Robert, thanks for joining us here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show, my friend. Thanks a lot. How's it going? Everything's going great here. Congratulations on your new book. Uh, it has been really a little bit of a buzz going around uh, talking about it. We talked with Chris last week on the book. Before we get to the book itself, obviously the WSOP is in its new home of Bally's in Paris. And you and your brothers had so much tremendous success over at the Rio. Wanted to kind of get your take on the new location. Do you like it? What are the good? What's the bad? You know, what's kind of your take on on the new location here at Bally's Paris? Um, I like it better because it's on the strip. It's uh, it's a lot classier casino than the Rio. Uh, it's uh, they got better um, better food. They got a bigger room. They got um, more things to do. Right. And when you're on the strip, you know, it's easier to miss other casinos like uh, the Bellagio, the Aria. And, uh, of course, um, you're ready right to a um, lot better choices with uh, different venues and everything like that. So it's a lot more fun, definitely, on the strip as opposed to the real. So everyone is glad about the change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot more, though, I think one of the biggest things is a lot more food options, right? Like, I don't know, I understand how the WSOP Cafe is going to survive. <laughs> There's no way it could survive. I mean, back then it was, uh, I mean, we had no choice. Right. Well, we had right. the food. Definitely had no choice. Over there, you know, you have all those places outside. You have um, so many more options. It's, it's right. better to choose from and a right, lot more right. fun. Seems like to me a little bit like even the lighting's a little bit better, right? Like the ballroom lighting is better. Like Amazon room has always seemed like it was like we we're in a cave. <laughs> Darker and, and, you know, right. it's hard to even get around everywhere. Let's and, talk a little. Uh, oh, sorry. Go ahead. You keep going. Go ahead. Sorry. No, that's where we go. Go ahead. Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the book. How did it kind of get started? I know that you were doing an interview with somebody and it kind of uh, started from there and then you guys reached out to Chris, but kind of how did it all start? Well, um, I met Tatiana. She's uh, a friend of mine from Australia and she's been really good and she, you know, we became really close friends over the pandemic and um, she's been helping me with everything and she's gave me a good idea. We should, my brother and I should write a book about horse. And um, it took us about a little over a year to, um, you know, get our thoughts together. And then, um, and then when my friend uh, Tom Hammers and um, Tatiana introduced us to uh, Chris Wallace, right. you know, we, we teamed together, my brother and I and Chris and we were able to, um, you know, write the book together. You know, with the three of us, we have excellent knowledge on the horse. So we all came together and things went really well. And I hope this book uh, succeeds. You know, yeah, especially my goal is to get players, you know, to improve their game and to get better. We don't want them getting too good because obviously we want you guys taking down these titles. But like you said, Chris Wallace won the horse event in 2014, the $10,000. Uh, Michael has won the poker players championship, obviously uh, three in unprecedented three times. You yourself has won the dealer's choice six handed in 2014. Also the Omaha eight or better seven card studs championship, which of course all of those events are in the horse series again for people who aren't as familiar horse stands for h is limit hold'em o omaha eight or better r raz s 
seven card stud high. E is a seven card stud eight, but that's where the E comes in, eight or better. Um, really quickly for you, is that of all of those games, which is the game that you love the most? Which are the ones that you're the most excited about when it comes up? I mean, probably Omaha Hilo. That's my best game in the mix yeah. from all the yeah. games. I mean, um, and stud eight or better. I play stud really well, too. Hold them. I used to be really good, but I don't have as much experience as I, I mean, I don't play it as much. Uh, Raz, I play pretty solid and pretty much uh, sums up the five games, but definitely Omaha High Low. I mean, I like Stud High Low too, you know, so, I mean, both games, very similar. Let's talk about those being that they're your favorite games and your best games. So Omaha High Low. Give the listeners a little bit of advice for people who just, you know, they, we don't need you to go through the entire chapters uh, in your book because obviously we want them to buy the book, but give them a little bit of a taste of some things that people don't do well in Omaha 8 or better. Um, well, you should always be drawing to the nut low, especially in a multi-way pot. And it's always good to have backup in your hand. And of course, you know, not having an ace, gives yourself a disadvantage as opposed to other players holding aces in their hand or one ace, you know, because, you know, if you flop an ace, you have a pair. And if you don't flop an ace, you're pretty much drawn to the nut low. So your hand is pretty, pretty bad without an ace in your hand. I mean, mm -hmm. especially in a multi-way pot. Especially if you're trying, obviously in any of these split games, the dream would be to scoop it so that you don't know just, you're not just going after one side of it. And so if you're only having, two, three, five in your hand, the odds of you getting it is, is, is lower. Right. And they also plays for high and low. So. Right. Right. What about seven card stud high, low? What are some of the things that uh, you kind of look out for and, and, and try to, when you see somebody doing something wrong, you know that they're not playing it well. Try to avoid hands like do seven, eight or do three, eight. You can't really make the two way hand. Um, I like playing high hands a lot, you know, especially in a heads up pot and in, in a, in a multi-way pot, I like playing hands that can connect you to make a straight or a flush and a low, as opposed to like two, three, seven, which is a hard hand to make a straight or a flush, especially if it's, you're not, you're not suited. And especially in a heads up pot, you're pretty much, getting free rolled because you have no high or no potential high in that kind of in those kind of spots right 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 so, so you, you like on later so, streets so are you correct that you're you like better something along the lines of four uh let's say five six seven right uh, maybe not five six seven is opposed to one three seven or something like that even though well, maybe two three seven two three seven is probably a better example right Exactly. But one three seven is okay. I'm, I'm a heads right. up pot, that way pot. I'm uh, too thrilled about a hand like that. Especially, right. I don't even really play it if, if there's a lot lower cards showing that are under a seven and uh, the races come in from tighter players or solid players. So I, right. I, I like folding in hands like that because and I think also it'll in, get. In in all the stud games, it's definitely one of those things where these players who are so used to hold them, where it's, you know, the flop is sitting there, it's all community, and you have these two cards, is that to be paying attention to the cards that come up, especially right out of the gate. If your cards are being utilized, you know, if you have ace three, ace three, six, let's say, which isn't the phenomenal, but at least it's a starting, but there's two twos and two fours out and a five. Now, suddenly, all the cards that you need or it's going to make it very difficult to make that low hand, right? Yeah, it'll be a difficult hand to play, especially, you know, where, I mean, if there's a lot of low cards that are out there, most likely high cards are coming. So you're uh, definitely a small, a big dog to get a low in that right. situation. So you right, want right, right. the majority so, of the times. It's all about live cards. Right, so, you know, right. But Talk a little bit about what you're saying before, is that you like playing big cards heads up in seven card 
uh, eight or better. We're not talking seven card stud. We're talking eight card stay in bed. Talk a little bit about that because I think that so many people get it drilled in their mind. You got to go, you know, you, you got to start with low cards that have this, that, that have a straight or flush possibility, but talk about, you know, you have Queens or you have Kings or something along those lines. Talk a little bit about that and how important that, or, or why you would utilize that in eight or better. Um, well, hold on. Let me get to a more quiet. Sorry. No problem. We are interviewing Robert as he's obviously at the casino. So it does get a little loud at times. So no problem. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah. So on a heads up pot, I like playing big pairs, especially, you know, when, 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 uh, the guy that's, um, when you heads up on a three way hand, when, even if the player makes a low, it's very unlikely that they scoop you. And uh, if they miss their low, you're going to scoop them. Right. So right. playing, you know, the high pairs, especially heads up on a three-way pot. And a multi-way pot, you know, I try to avoid, you know, high hands, especially in a, like a four-way hand or five-way pot. Because, you know, if someone backs into a straight or a flush, you know, you're going to get scooped. Right. A high right. part of the time if you don't you know, make your hand. So if you start out in seven card stud eight or better, and it's the, it's on third street, everyone gets dealt and the bring in is immediately to your right. And you look down at Kings and you've got six players after you. And maybe there's an ace up somewhere along the way. I, it seems like it's a difficult spot because you're not sure if you do bring it in for a raise, you could end up having it a multi-way pot. Do you let that go? Whereas if you're in later position, you would definitely raise. How do you kind of play those out based off of the position that you end up being in? I mean, if there's an ace out there, I'm not thrilled about the hand. And right. a, a third card also means a lot too. I mean, if I have um, a low card with my kings, yep. I'm more likely to play than to fold because at least I know there's a small chance that I could hit four perfect cards and, and make a low as opposed to like having a nine, 10 Jack queen in my hand. Yeah. With my yeah. There's no chance at that. So, oh. I mean, it also depends on what player has the ace showing. It depends on the other cards out, but I mean, if there's a lot of low cards, I might fold it. Very yeah. like, and if um, there's no ace out there, I'm definitely going to raise it. Not thrilled. Right. So as the World Series is kind of going on right now, what are the events that you really like? You circled in the schedule. I, without a question, am going to play in this event. I mean, let's let's take the main event out of it. Obviously, everyone wants to play. But what other events for you are you like, these are the ones that I really want to play and obviously ultimately take down and take it, uh, your fifth bracelet? Yeah, well, um, Oh my low events. I mean, I got kind of uh, far in the first oh my low. The second one, uh, I just couldn't get nothing going on day two. And um, the stud high low events, the mix, big bet mix, I just got knocked out. Uh, and um, the dealer's choice, I love for sure. And those, those events. And uh, I like playing triple draw events. It's a lot of fun. You know? Yeah. 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 Keep yeah. Like nothing special. Right. And PLO for sure. I love PLO. I think mm -hmm. uh, putting on pressure on, on the right spots, it's a, it's a fun game. I try to avoid as much hold'em as I can. It's fairly boring to me besides the main. And um, a lot of the mixed games usually. Yeah. Yeah. So you're definitely. Staying up late and getting up late because <laughs> most of the events start later. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of, you know, and um, a lot of the best players in the world are here competing. So, you know, we do this every year. You know, it's in our blood. The competition and, and, and the thrill of winning. Yeah. Well, Robert, hey, listen, congratulations on the new book with your brother and Chris Wallace. Like we said, we had Chris on last week. We're very pleased to have you on this week talking about it. Everyone go to Amazon, 
get getting started with horse poker again by Chris Wallace with Michael and Robert Mizrahi. Robert, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate your time. Hey, good luck for the rest of the series and hopefully you win your fifth bracelet and I'm going to have you back on the show. Uh, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Have a great day, guys. Awesome. Robert Mizrahi here on the Bernard Lee Poker Show. Hope you enjoyed that interview. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to continue our interviews from the 2022 World Series of Poker as we continue our 15th anniversary celebration. And as always, may you always go in with the best hand and may you never get unlucky. Good night, everybody.